Physics materials are technically optional components of your colliders, but they really impact how your game feels. In this video, we're gonna take a look at what are they, how do you create them, and what every option does. Hey, Chris here from Mom Academy, here to help you. <laughs> yes, you. Make your game dev dreams become a reality by helping your game feel better with physics materials. Now, if you're like me, you probably don't use these ever until something goes wrong. And that's technically fine, but if you have like a rigid body character controller, have knockback effects, or even just have physics objects in your game, you probably need to use these. And you might ask, but Chris, what are physics materials? Well, these are materials much like what we use for rendering, but for the physics system. We can create these by going to asset, create, physics material, and that allows us to create as many different materials as we need for our game. And importantly, if you don't set a physics material on a collider, it uses the default settings. That's why it works if you don't even have one assigned to your collider. These hold all of the information about how does friction work and how bouncy an object should be. Let's start with friction just because there's more options for those. And if you don't remember what friction is from your middle school science class, friction is the force that's resisting when you have two objects pressing up against each other. Like when you do this, that heat that comes up and the resistance you feel is friction. In this physics material, we have two different types of friction. We have static and dynamic friction. Static friction is the friction applied when an object first starts moving, so it's not moving, and it wants to start moving, pressing up against another object. Dynamic friction is if they're already moving, how much friction should be applied. And this enables some interesting gameplay mechanics where maybe something could be really hard to push when it's not moving, but once it gets started moving, it slides effortlessly. Or the inverse where it's really easy to get moving, but then it slows down a lot because there's a lot of friction. But what happens if we have two different types of objects that have different configurations for the amount of friction that they have? That's where the friction combine property comes in. This property can be either set to maximum, minimum, multiply, or average. And I think all of those are pretty self-explanatory just from the name of how you would combine them together. But there's a gotcha here, the order of these is important. If you have an object that says average and you have another object that says maximum, when these two objects touch, it will use the maximum for that calculation. Unity gives us this table that shows us the priority order of these, which goes maximum, multiply, minimum, average, meaning average will only be taken as a last resort and maximum, if available, will always be chosen. So if you're messing with this property, be wary of the importance of and the implications of changing one of these. That means it's not necessarily, I put average on this physics material because I want it to combine averagely. It's not gonna work that way if you set something else to anything besides average. Now that we know how friction is applied, let's move on to bounciness. That's a little bit more fun. Bounciness defines how bouncy this surface is with a value of zero, meaning you lose all of the kinetic energy when you make impact. If you don't remember kinetic energy from middle school science as well, that's the energy related to movement. If we set a value to one, that means it's gonna retain all of that energy when it bounces off the surface. But Chris, what if we have different bounciness configurations on the different objects? I'm so glad you asked. There's also a property, bounce combine, that works the exact same as friction combine. So if you skip through the video, past friction combine, go back, watch that segment. I've got chapters at the bottom of the video that tell you exactly where to go and when I'm gonna switch from one topic to another. That's on all of my videos. Now you have all the information you need to get started using physics materials and hopefully also know why you need to use them. I've got links in the description to all of the documentation that I brought up on the screen throughout this video and a link to the GitHub project that's publicly available for everyone with what you've been seeing this entire video. All of my videos have a GitHub repository associated with it, and all of them are available for free for everyone. If you think that's really awesome and you wanna show your support for this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash academy or click join or super thanks right here on YouTube. That helps me out a tremendous amount and helps keep this channel running. If for whatever reason you can't make that kind of contribution, you can use the Asset Store or Humble Bundle affiliate links down in the description. You just click through there before you make any purchase on the Asset Store or Humble Bundle. That gives me a small percentage of the purchase price at no additional charge to you. That's also tremendously helpful. And I wanna give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon and YouTube supporters. I do this at the end of every video. You can get your name up here on the screen and a shout out as well. At the Phenomenal and the Tremendous tier, you get this super cool exclusive dissolve shader. And at the Awesome tier, you'll start getting a shout out as well, like these awesome supporters. Ivan, Rulin, Ifiabolus, Perry, and Mustafa, and Jerematic. 
There's also all of these great supporters as well. Again, thank you all for your support. I am so incredibly grateful.